Hey campers, welcome back to another episode of Campermon. On this episode, Mike Stibbs and I are going to be talking about the Mark Driscoll, John Lindell, stripper in church, Jezebel spirit fiasco that's been kind of unfolding over these past several weeks. And we're also going to talk about satanic panic in the tinfoil hat time segment. But before we do that, Mike and I, we kind of started recording this episode in the middle of a conversation where we were talking about division in the local church, and it was an interesting conversation, so I kind of wanted to just leave that in. So if this one starts off a little bit different than normal, that's why you're jumping in the middle of a conversation that Mike and I were having before we started recording, but I wanted to leave that in for y'all to be a part. Many millennia ago, at the peak of Mount Hermon in the Golan Heights, a group of divine beings known as the Watchers, or Sons of God, descended in an act of rebellion against their king, Yahweh. By teaching them the secret knowledge of the cosmos, they sought to wrestle dominion of the earth away from humanity. They bore children with them, and their offspring were both human and divine. These giants are the demigods of old, and the events that transpired would forever alter the course of human history. At Camp Herman, we discuss the oddities of the ancient world and their lingering impact on our world today. Welcome. The American church context. Yeah, does it apply to me? In, yeah. In that same, co- in the context that's being used, yeah, I don't, uh, right. I'm with you, I don't know, so... But for me, I'm like, do not forsake the gathering together. So I'm like, I'm going to be a part. But I actually had a conversation with a guy just a few weeks ago. He was like, oh, why don't you serve with the youth ministry? I was like, man, the stuff that I would talk about and that I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't fit in, you know. And he's like, well, you just, you know, we talked about the Nephilim and all that kind of stuff. He's like, well, you know, you just got to keep the main thing, the main thing. And I'm like. Yeah, see, that's where we would that's where we would disagree that, you know, discussing what's in the Bible is not being the main thing because it's all connected, you know, like. Right. right. Yeah, I don't I, I'm kind of with you on that. I, I'm not going to I'm not going to keep my mouth shut, you know, for something like that, you know, for church politics. I'm just I just can't do it, you know, so I don't see myself uh, being in church leadership unless it's a uh, I don't know. Well, man, it's, church. it's a it's a hard thing because even even if you were to go to a church, and like I I'll, I always like to put it in an interesting context. Like, picture this: like in a hundred years from now, or two or three hundred years from now, you've got the Church of the Heiserites, <laughs> right? You'll def you're definitely going to have a Heiserite religion that's going to to kind of depart from it um the question would be though uh would that would that church adhere to what michael heiser talked about and start and stop splintering off because we've done this for ages since since the church history has begun is that somebody has had a really cool Bible revelation based on research or based on uh, a Holy Spirit encounter where the Holy Spirit showing them something in the scriptures and then putting those things to and, and then we splinter off into all these little subgroups and we are there are right now in the midst of us there's Heiserites and somebody is going to start that church. I don't know if it's going to be called Heiserites, but someone is <laughs> going to start that that movement. You think so? I I really do, man. And I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing. It's a human thing. It is it's a human thing for us to it's almost like the cycle of a nation. You know, we start off in one place and then we just go in this circle and we all end up m- missing the boat. You know, well, we eventually will screw up the church. Somebody will, you know, it just always happens. Like church, <laughs> church is filled with people. And if you want to be a pastor and you want that stage, right? And, and 
they'll tell you, oh, well, humility is the way to get there. Bull, bull, I've been in church. You be humble, it, you're not going to end up at, at, uh, teaching or preaching in that church. You know what I mean? Like God's God can even speak to that pastor and tell him to put Chris on stage or Mike on stage. You think they're going to give you the stage? No way. No way that you have to go through their rungs. You got to go through their protocol and you need to be initiated the way that they would see you initiated and be trusted within their system to be able to hold that microphone. And that's where they messed up with Driscoll. Driscoll definitely is like a rogue cop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just doing his own thing. So I think you're, you might be right, but here's why I don't think that, that there would be a, a Heiser, Heiser right denomination. If they're true to his teachings is he talked about people like continuing to stay a part of local churches, even though they don't teach divine council worldview stuff. And he said many times, and it really blessed me. He's like, if all you have is just is fellowship, he's you're good. Like I'm paraphrasing. He's basically saying like, you can get solid, like teaching and preaching elsewhere <laughs> you know <laughs> um like went through the naked bible podcast and and plenty of other you know podcasts and teachings and things like there's so many resources at our fingertips uh, that you don't need to to kind of just go and be a part of a local church to get fed which i think even that's one of those things where it's not i don't think that's a local church's responsibility anyway like yes it is part of the local church's responsibility to to teach and preach, but if it's just not divine counsel worldview or doesn't just jive with all of what you believe, I don't think that's a reason to to leave. No. Um, and, and he talked about that plenty uh, because, you know, there's a lot of people in this space that are, they're not satisfied at, at the church at because they're learning all this like really cool stuff about divine counsel worldview and just kind of everything that fits under that umbrella with all the the supernatural and paranormal stuff. And their pastor may not be teaching and preaching about it. I I was there, you know, I've been but, there. And that and that's the thing too. I mean, Chris, and I would I would kind of like push back on even what you're saying. Like you don't think that's that's gonna happen. Even the Bible said, don't do it, you know? D like don't like Paul was saying, don't say I'm of Apollos, I'm of this guy, I'm of that guy, right? You're all of Christ, you know. We it's you're all of this we're all part of the same of the same body so we're like splintering off well i'm not a part of mark driscoll i'm a part of michael heiser and like now we got to ask like um i i saw the trailer to that new civil war movie and it just goes like the dude says i'm an american and the other guy goes well what kind of american are you you know like i'm a christian well, what kind of a Christian are you? Like, <laughs> like, what do you believe? Like what? And that's, that's the thing. It's like, we got, we did that. We did the same thing. And I just mean by we, I mean, just the church. Like there were some, some pastors and teachers that had really, really good revelation on being able to use the power of God in your life, right? The power of prayer, the power of healing and the power of words. And there's not one thing that anybody could do because it's so in the Bible, it's so there that we do have this power, but yet they perverted it and twisted it beyond all measure after a while until it became, um, you know, a thing of, of self-service. And now, now I'm gonna go to church, I'm gonna learn this mantra i'm gonna learn this prayer and this prayer is going to equal my success my financial success 
it's going to, I heard one pastor say, uh, Creflo Dollar, that well, that God is the gateway to wealth. So I'm going to go to church, have a relationship with God so I could be rich, which is, by the way, it's, it's, it's so perverted to put it that way. But then at the same time, like we still have power. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's God's will for you to be wealthy because you lived and managed your money right, so be it. And if you can let that not change you, cool. But if you're if you're like, you know, this evil little guy praying for money in the corner and you're going to spend it on your, oh, wait, James talks about it. You're going to spend it on your own desires anyway. Why is God going to even hear that prayer? Why would he even look at you? And that's what they're teaching. They said they exalted a prayer above relationship because they said, if you pray like this, you have to receive by God's word or God is a liar and God's not a liar. So you have all these frustrated, you know, Christians that can't get healed, that can't get out of money problem, and you promised it to them, and now the whole thing is blown up, and it's like what we see now is like just a little tiny remnant left, like with Kenneth Copeland and mm -hmm. some of some of his guys. I think there's another guy in Florida, I forget his name, but uh, that that teach on that prosperity stuff, and it's like like I just see somebody like that super correct uh, charismatic that's going to come out and he's going to teach the Heiserite stuff and that it's <laughs> going to be like this new awakening. And in a way, I, th I think it's a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, I, I think it's important for people to understand um, the true story. I just don't know that it's going to be untouched like the rest of God's revelation. Cause once man gets involved, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll screw it up. Yeah, no. Speaking of man getting involved, on this episode today, we're going to be talking about what happened with this Mark Driscoll, John Lindell fiasco at the Stronger Men's Conference. We haven't talked about it to date, but there's a lot of stuff that's still kind of unfolding with it. But Mike, uh, before we discuss that topic, there's another interesting topic that you've got some information on that we're going to touch on later in this episode yeah, so so as you said, Chris, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the Mark Driscoll fiasco. Um, it seems that the cards have kind of settled. They've kind of you know. So it seems like we have a, a most of the real story out, um, and that's important. But we also are going to talk about we're going to talk about this thing called satanic panic, and I actually have some interesting proof from an outtake of. Uh, my documentary, The West Side of Saturn, that I never used it in there. But when I was doing research, I found out that some of the guys that wanted to uh, debunk satanic ritual abuse were pedophiles themselves. And it's on record. All the proof is there. And I've got an, wow. out, I've got an outtake to show you from my documentary. Wow. So we're going to dig into that later on in this episode. Wow. That's wild. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, it's definitely crazy, man. You, it's just you never know if you I mean, sometimes the truth, really, you only have to scratch a little bit behind it. And this one is super easy to find. And most people kind of like, oh, yeah, we did. We were just in this satanic panic and blamed everything. And now we're out of that. And then and then they call the cue. Uh, the resurgence of satanic panic, which is a completely different scenario. But yeah, this one's going to blow your mind because the dude, even, even what the guy says about God is it'll make you want to throw up. Um, but let's uh, leave, let's leave uh. that on the table for a little bit. Let's, let's dive into this Mark Driscoll thing. I know you had an article, Chris, do you want to like kind of thumb through this article and let people know kind of, you know, this is the facts have kind of come out about this guy and uh, who he actually is. Yeah. So there's a website called the Roy's Report, reporting the truth, restoring the church. So it looks like it's a bunch of Christian uh, journalists that that write about things that are happening involving the church kind of 
at large local churches. So they've been following this uh, stronger men's conference situation with, with Driscoll and Mike, do we want to kind of go back and, and kind of recap it for everybody? Um, I think we could just give the abridged version. Basically what the thumbnails were saying was that a, uh, a stripper opened up a, uh, a male stripper opened up a, a men's conference. And basically he was just like a sword swallower type of stuff you would see like on America's Got Talent, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, and then you tell the rest. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, initially when I saw that first video, the way he he took off his, you know, shirt did feel, you know, kind of stripper-esque. And he's climbing up this pole, sliding up and down a pole. Yeah, he did swallow a sword. I was like, man, that is a really weird thing to be, to have, you know, to have at a men's conference. But so I, I definitely think it was a big swing and a miss by whoever organized the conference i'm going to assume that pastor john lindell probably had a say in organizing that and scheduling that you know a lot of people were saying that oh you know it was was it some sort of like in, weird initiation thing or was it one of those things where it's like a ritual that they're just kind of putting out in the open and all these people are seeing and no one's kind of you know doing something about I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I think best case scenario, Mike, is it was just a big swing and a miss because at this men's conference, it it's, you know, stronger men. So I think it was best case scenario is it was just meant to be a show of like male physical strength and prowess kind of thing. Right. But it I don't know. It, it did for me too much, a little too much like a part of a a stripper act, you know, like if that happened at like circus or something, I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of normal. You know, weird, weird performances happen at circuses, but at a men's conference. Yeah. That was just strange. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think like for me, it's, it's hard for me to look at that and to even get mad at it, you know? And what I mean is that these mega churches have done so much more worst things over the years than than this and so i'm not necessarily like if i saw that like on tv like i, I just i'm clicking off of it that's not what i want to watch that's not christian you know if i'm there at the conference uh okay guys what the heck but you know i'm a big boy i can I could take the the meat from the uh, spit out the the bones and eat the meat is what they always say, but at the same time, yeah, a level of discernment has not been used by mega churches for a long, <laughs> long time, and this is this is this is the progression of that. You know what I'm saying? It's not this. This isn't a one off thing. I mean, uh, I, I think it's really stupid when churches do movie night, like churches, like movie night at the church. I'm going to do a sermon on the Hulk. I mean, that to me, it seems nerdy. Like you have to be cool to get the kids to come in. No, 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 no. Be who you are. Be the church, right? That's what makes you cool. If a kid or somebody is looking up to you, they're not looking up to you because you know how to preach Marvel. They're looking up to you because of the way that you live your life, the way that you treat people and the way that you love people. And I, to me, when I see that at the mega churches, like I, it is like, I'm, I'm cringing. I'm embarrassed. You know, when I see those, uh, trailers for movie night at the church that I'm going to, they, they, they do the same thing. I, I am, I'm embarrassed. And I think that we um, were not believing that the kids of today and even the young adults of today have the attention capacity to actually learn the real gospel. Just teach the real gospel for those who have ears to hear. Jesus says, let them hear. We don't need to try to be cool. Yeah. No, I feel you. I don't like to criticize churches too much or or 
I should say not every mega church is is the same. So like I technically go to a mega church. It's the belonging company in Nashville. And it's like it is huge. It's very like hip, honestly, like with just the worship and the lighting and like everything they do is is pretty, pretty hip. And I'm like the least hip person. So I stick out like a, thor a sore thumb. You know, I don't dress cool. I'm just I don't know. I'm not I'm not hip, Mike. I'm kind of a dork. <laughs> um, but I don't want to criticize because to me, like the heart of this church is honoring the Lord. And one of the reasons why it is so hip is the pastors that started the church. One of them, he's a he's been in like Christian music forever. So he was and he's been in ministry for a long time. So he's a he's a producer and they're from Australia and they moved to the U.S. to actually get away from ministry. Like they were getting out of ministry, wanted to go focus more on music. And they started a Bible study on Tuesday nights for their friends who are artists who can't really go to church because they're touring or working on the weekends. So they started a Bible study that just literally grew into a church of thousands of people. So it wasn't something that they intentionally did, but the Lord like called them to do it. But I will say they do really cool stuff, but not like having a stripper per <laughs> stripper esque performance at a men's conference or just these like weird things just to try to get attention. They're not, you know, getting helicopters and dropping eggs from from helicopters and stuff like that. So I don't know, man. I honestly sit on the fence about some of that stuff on, you know, whether it's a good idea to do to to draw in, you know, like youth and then using pop culture to to teach the Bible. I think really it depends on like your heart, why you're doing it and how you're executing it, to be honest. Um, so I don't know. I, I w I've never been to a church that did a movie night, but I think it'd be kind of cool, but I've never experienced it. So maybe it is. Well, what they would do, I know this one church that I was going to, and this was back, this would have been back in the early 2010s. But yeah, so you were kind of like assigned to watch a movie for that week you know, like the Hulk and then boom, then he would preach on the Hulk or then next week you're watching, uh, you're watching Iron Man one. Uh, and then he's doing, he's pulling a sermon out of that stuff. And, and yeah, to me, it was, it, it was, it was totally cringe. And maybe, maybe the ingredient that was missing is, is that this guy that I'm referring to was not called to do that, you know? Mm -hmm if you're called to do that and that's where, yeah, then you've got to follow that voice where it takes you um, and take the blowback no matter what, because there's going to be voices, you know, that are going to criticize you. I mean, you look online, you know, to, to have a big Christian YouTube channel, you have to call people out and criticize them and go back and forth. Like it's, it's a part of, just that culture and that culture with within youtube christianity i'm not talking about just one person making a video i'm talking about the aggregate of it which we're right in the middle of it you know is you know when you have all of these videos on mark driscoll that, you know, on some hand, on one hand, you'll have a guy come out and he's saying, there's nothing wrong with what anybody did. Driscoll was at a place. You click on the next video, Driscoll was, was, you know, Driscoll was right on in this church. He should have burnt the church down. And this church was satanic and all of this. And it's, it's really weird, the back and forth. And then this guy, and I know it's in this article here, the guy, um, his name was Alex Magala, and they talked about, like, there were rumors that he was, became a born-again Christian 10 years ago. And that just wasn't the case at all. It's not, right. the, it's not the case at all. And so these guys that you were talking about investigated that, and they found out that Alex uh, Magala considers himself to be a Christian Orthodox, okay, or Orthodox Christian. And you basically, when you're, before you could even talk and put on your own pants, they put you through the rungs themselves. So you're a Christian by, by right, by initiation within to that 
Christian. So he just believes he's saved no matter what the heck he does. And I guess he, he's he been to this church a few times um, called, uh, I forget the name, let's see. Mosaic. Called, uh, yeah, okay. So he's been to this church a few times called the Mosaic, which I believe is a Baptist church. Um, and he said, i been to that church a few times, but a lot of people were saying like he's a, a, a member of the church. And so why are we trying to, I don't know, why are we trying to twist the story? Or is it that we're not trying to twist the story, but maybe some of the YouTubers that had information didn't really look up and investigate before hitting uh you know hitting that button on the youtube to uh to to list the video because and i hear that a lot chris i'll see i'll see people say some extraordinary things and if you just scratch the surface just a little bit to see if that's a truth or a lie you could find out right away with easily verifiable things and i think i think a lot of the tmz christian youtube channels really really made themselves look dumb but they've done it before they did it and they'll do it again and they don't care because it's about the views they'll make an apology video get another you know 50k views couple bucks from youtube going back in all right guys what's next let's wait to right. see what's next yeah and and for us mike that's really not our desire we're not going to just say we're not going to just jump the conclusions or just say any old thing just to get to get views or to get clicks and to be honest like if we wanted to do that then we would literally we wouldn't agree on a lot we would always disagree on subjects because that's more controversial the right. the drama it draws views and likes and we just can't do that man we've got to just be genuine if we disagree genuinely then we will disagree genuinely but we're not going to we're not going to manufacture it for views and likes. Okay, so to kind of get to Driscoll part of this, so the guy does his act, and then the next day, Driscoll comes on stage. You guys have probably already saw seen the videos. He comes on stage and he basically he basically is calling out the church for having this guy come and perform a stripper act, which I agree it was definitely stripper esque and weird. And he mentioned, you know, this the this Jezebel spirit running rampant in the church, and you know, pretty much calling it out. And the pastor John Lindell kicks him off stage, boots him from the conference. And Driscoll's like, "All right, yep, you know, respectfully, he he leaves." And then the next day, he's back at the conference. He's sitting down with John Lindell, and he apologizes, said that he should have come to, you know, John first, and and discussed it, and not just kind of made a, a public rebuke about it uh so it seemed like at that point like everything everything was cool with them but then driscoll apparently according to john is starts texting john's son let me find this in the article apparently he's he's texting john's son telling him that he needs to take over the church and let's see, where is it? Driscoll also urged Lindell's son, David Lindell, to take James River Church and to separate himself from his father and brother. And I guess Driscoll was was texting the brother. And he, so he the brother must be another brother must be involved in the church as well. And he's texting that brother something about a list of secret sins that he knows about. So there's some back and forth that seems like from Drix Driscoll on this he apologizes for the public rebuke seems like they make up and they're cool goes home then he's texting John Lindell's kids one saying you need to take over the you know get the church wrestle the church from your father and and get rid of him and just so super weird yeah that is super weird and let me let me explain something Okay, and I'm going to explain this based on the actions that I see. Okay, now, uh, when it comes to the spirit Jezebel, there's huge talks and huge debates whether there actually is a spirit of Jezebel. I, and I don't care. Call it the Kentucky Fried Spirit. Call <laughs> it whatever you want. 
but there is a a spirit that when this and what this spirit wants to do is he wants to divide he wants to sow discord discord he wants to cause confusion and this spirit is absolutely rampant at that church and driscoll was one of the people that brought that in driscoll i don't like driscoll okay i think he i think he can be forgiven for his past transgressions but i don't think in my opinion it might be a hard opinion he seems like the same old snake oil salesman he always was and he said i've been up all night praying for you guys okay and the lord told me to say this he gets down on his knee and starts to almost cry, takes off his hat right dude the dude's been to acting school this dude is an actor and and oh oh okay yes i'll receive that pastor i'll get off the stage now guess what driscoll has in his back pocket he's got a new book called old demons uh something like uh old demons new days right that the demons from the old they're still here doing the same thing right and mark driscoll by texting the sun and trying to cause even more division after being two-faced to john lindell if this is in fact true this is exactly what the jezebel spirit does is it wants to divide conquer confuse and sow discord among the brethren and you know i think driscoll was 100 percent out of line any day of the week right if you really felt that way if you if you really 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 felt that way a don't get off the stage and b stand up and say this is wrong this is not christianity and i rebuke this church put down the microphone get out and never say anything about it again because if indeed god did tell you to say that god's not telling you to say all the nonsense you're saying now mark driscoll and to have twitter wars or x wars with this guy uh alex Magela, who who indeed doesn't seem to me that he is how we would classify as a born again christian that has had this experience where his life has changed we don't know that we just know what alex corrected everybody on saying that i'm not this type of christian i was a christian when i was a kid right and so that is that that is the spirit jezebel that we call jezebel okay that spirit is in a lot of different churches it's in a lot of different people and that church guess what that or i'm sorry that spirit wants attention so so bad it needs to be the worship pastor it needs to be the pastor it needs to get up on that stage and it's i guarantee you if you're listening to this and you've been to a church the jezebel spirit has tried to work through you if you've been in church and um, too many pastors with not enough discernment let that spirit talk in the church and i i i can i can sense it every single time man that spirit just wants to be heard and it's always going to be divisive and sowing discord yeah. All right. I want to make one correction. And I think you mentioned it and maybe maybe I heard you wrong, but I have seen other people mentioning that, oh, this was just a setup for Driscoll's new book that's coming out about, you know, that, that came out. Um, so unless there's another book I don't know about. So New Days Old Demons came out go. in 2023. And, he, and after the conference, he was saying, hey, if you want a free copy of my book, let me know it's about the Jezebel spirit. And I think people were thinking, oh, he did this just to promote his book coming out. The book had already come out and he was offering people free copies of it to learn more about what he was talking about at the conference. Yeah, Yeah, man, I I just think anytime you've got humans involved, it's not always even demonic spirits, right? It's, It's our own 
sinful fallen nature that's involved yeah. one two there's a lot of spirits trying to influence us negatively you can call them whatever you want who knows what their names actually actually are so well, that's one the, practice well, well that's the thing chris is we'll call it the jezebel spirit but how can this spirit be like over here and be over here and be over here are they omnipresent you know what i mean so it's like like I get what they mean by Jezebel spirit, but it's not like there's just one. It's just, it's this demonic influence. Right. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, listen, I don't know if, uh, you know, who knows it was a fictional work, but the screw tape letters, man, these, these demonic spirits are on assignment, right? They're on assignment. They're trying to, to negatively influence us. And, you know, one thing that happens is these spirits get us to do things to where we harm ourselves in different ways, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And sometimes that's all they need to do. Then we take over and we just continue doing, you know, doing what we've been trained and programmed to do, influenced to do, you know, by these spirits. It's, it's a slightly complicated, but in a, in a way it's a, it's a simple thing to kind of understand, but yeah, man. So, you know, all that goes down. I think bottom line Everybody in, involved in this situation was wrong in some way, shape, or form. And to your point, people, if you're if you're a leader, which every single person is a leader, like we we are all, you know, as believers, we are all priests. Like we are in this uh, priesthood yeah. of believers. So we should all be seeking the Lord for wisdom and for guidance, and you know, have humility and set aside pride. And yeah, it doesn't seem like that's what happened at this conference, Mike. Yeah, you know, I I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, look, I'm not a fan of of the mega church pastors, and that's why, I, and I'll be hard on Driscoll. I'll, you know, I was hard on uh, the dude from Hillsong. Um, you can't even remember his name now. The the it'll come to me, but the guy from Hillsong that was cheating on his wife, like with the uh, the living nanny. You know, God, what is his name? I know his name. I know his name too. I can't think of it because I watched the documentary on Hillsong. And it's I can't. so crazy. It's like the, the is it the Lord trying to keep the name from me so I don't so I don't speak against his anointed? It's um, <laughs> Carl Lentz. Why couldn't I think of that, Carl? I I was I was I was hard on Carl Lentz before all of this because i'm not a fan i'll tell you what i'm not a fan of i'm not a fan of going to church and i'm just gonna say this man because i know i know we're grown-ups okay and chris we can edit this out later if you feel that i have to but i don't want to see your man bulge on i don't i don't i don't want to see your man bulge right <laughs> I don't want to see you in <laughs> in pants that are so tight that I can you can see your actual butt crack. You know what I'm saying <laughs> through your pants. Yeah. And there's something yeah. there, there's there is something wrong. And by the way, women too, you've done it. Some of the mega pastors' wives have done it. There's a there's a church here in Montana that I went to, and the wife was pregnant. Got on stage, you could see most of her boobs, and you could see, you could see the camel. Yeah. And I'm telling, I'm telling, <laughs> and I'm telling you though, there, there is something wrong with that. Yeah. That to where you, first of all, as a woman, thinks it's okay, and then your man doesn't say, "Hey, babe, you know, you've got a child in there," and even more importantly, you've got the Holy Spirit in there. You may not want to provoke you know, some of these kids by the way that, that you're dressing and that, and, and the dude, the pastor on the same day was wearing a Metallica shirt. And like, I was like, dude, I was like freaking out, man, Metallica. There was so, I'm like, I'm going to make so many videos on this church and I'm going to bring this guy down, which by the way, I never made one video on it. I'm not even going to mention the guy's name, but this is going to be my final word on this subject. You know I don't like mega pastors, okay, guys? But I like you, and I love you. And I love the potential with inside of any person to be able to change by the Holy Spirit. And I want you to ask yourself, is that are you 
getting closer to God by going to some of these churches, or is it leading you further away? Or there's a third option, even in Chris's case, where Chris understands he's, he's, he's got an identity. He, he knows his identity. And he can go to the, he could go to this mega church that he goes to, and it doesn't necessarily bother him. And he knows that, you know, he knows that he is wheat among some tares, right? And if he just, if he's, is that wheat, he is that light at the end of the day, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be the wheat. We're supposed to be the light. And we're supposed to be an agent of the Holy Spirit that brings that hope to who God brings across our path. That's what Christianity is about. Amen, bro. That was good. Hey, all right. So I think we've we've beat that that subject uh, to death enough. Or well, I guess this is our second time talking about it. Yeah, first time that's going to make it to a recording. <laughs> Let's jump in for this segment of Camp Herman's tenfold hat time talking about the satanic panic. I'm just going to kind of give a brief explanation for this that I wrote. So the satanic panic was this huge scare that swept through the U.S. in the 1980s and early 90s where people were freaked out over the idea that Satanism and occult rituals were popping up everywhere especially in daycare centers. A lot of this fear was stoked by over-the-top media stories and some pretty questionable methods of getting information, like therapists using techniques that supposedly uncover hidden memories. So like when when therapists are working with satanic ritual abuse survivors, these recovered memories, Mike, they should be taken... They should not be just taken at face value. Like, you know... Because some of that programming is meant to be deceptive, right? So just believing that, you got to be careful with that. Um, But Mike, probably the most famous case from this time was the McMartin Preschool Trial. It kicked off in 1983 down in Manhattan Beach, California. The story was that the staff at the McMartin Preschool were involved in some dark rituals that included abusing the kids. The whole trial turned into a media circus with wild accusations flying based on the shaky testimonies of children and their parents. And it turned out might have been pushed into saying things that weren't true because of the way that they were interviewed. So, Mike, I know you could speak to this. People can be influenced even through, I think, some hypnotic suggestion to remember certain things with like implanted memories and even be pushed to, to believe certain things. And that's just that's dangerous when we're talking about accusing somebody of being a part of, uh, you know, satanic ritual abuse. Um, So long story short, that trial dragged on for like seven years. It was the most expensive and longest trial in U.S. history. And all the charges were dropped because they were talking about there's tunnels underneath the preschool. I guess they dug under. They never found any tunnels like there was no evidence that any of that was true. But that's really what sparked and fueled the kind of satanic panic movement. Mike, you mentioned earlier having evidence that there were actual pedophiles trying to brand the brand, the satanic panic movement so that it all just sounded ridiculous. And my thinking was that if I wanted you to not believe this was true, right. Then I would, what I would do is if something was happening that was real, right. Like satanic panic, What I would do is I would set someone up who was innocent, (laughs) I knew was innocent, and then I I would spark this whole big thing. That way we could point to that and be like, see, look, none of this is actually happening. And it's it's ridiculous. So, Mike, you mentioned earlier having evidence. Yeah, so we've got got a, a clip that will play. It's an outtake from episode five of The West Side of Saturn, my documentary series that I did on the West Memphis Three. Um, episode five has not come out yet, but this is an outtake and we'll play that in a second. But yeah, so um, even Satanic Panic, the uh, the origins of it, I think that was like the story you told was like one of the outcomes that came from the movement. But it started, it really started with uh, Dr. Pazner from Canada and his patient, Michelle. 
Now, he had claimed that after doing many sessions of what they call recovered memory therapy, that finally they got to the bottom of what was bothering her regarding her uncomfortableness around her parents. And so it all came to where Dr. Pasner recovered these memories from his patient, Michelle, and she had claimed over like an eight year period or something like that, where she was ritualized and she was taken into, you know, dungeons and, you know, raped and was even gone for like an eight week period of time where she was being abused the entire time and even came up with dates, calendar dates. Now, of course, somebody investigated that and uh, she never missed a day of school. She was never showed up to school with any signs of abuse or anything like that. And so this is a case of where recovered memory went too far and Dr. Pasner and who, you know, his patient, Michelle, who he later married, were really trying to milk something, milk a book and get some money out of a really twisted, twisted situation. But what I want to do, Chris, is I want to play this quick clip and we'll talk about it. And it does have to do with recovered memory therapy because recovered memory therapy is a real thing, but it's not always real when someone thinks that they're doing recovered memory. But let's just watch, watch this quick clip real quick. We truly do live in a world of information wars. Anything and everything that's controversial is met by opposers and debunkers. And satanic ritual abuse is no exception. Well, if one does a search, you know, and starts trying to look up satanic ritual abuse, one is uh, almost instantly confronted with the idea that it simply doesn't exist, that it's a mass hallucination effect, and the, the kids were, you know, are being, these memories are being planted. Uh, a lot of that was pro propagated by a foundation called the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. The debunkers of SRA victims are saying that the events never took place and that the therapist planted the ideas in the head of the victim. The year is 1990 and a young girl named Jennifer Freyd was having a lot of anxiety about an upcoming visit from her parents. So she decided to address the issue with her therapist. And her therapist used a method called recovered memory therapy. During the therapy session, the therapist allegedly uncovered memories of Jennifer being abused by her dad, Peter. Both her uncle and her grandparents encouraged her to bring these allegations into the light as there seemed to be an underlying history of abuse. As Peter and his wife grew up in the same household as step siblings, but later on got married. In response to these allegations of abuse, Peter Freyd with his therapist, Ralph Underwager, they decide to start the False Memory Syndrome Foundation to quote unquote, protect people falsely accused of abuse. So here's where it gets really weird. In 1993, an article that Underwager did with a pro pedophile magazine came to the surface. This article revealed that Underwager was a supporter of pedophilia. He even states in the interview that he's a theologian and that he believes that God's will for pedophiles is to fulfill their desires and that they deserve closeness. After this article came to the surface, Ralph Underwager resigned from the foundation. The False Memory Syndrome Foundation, however, went on for a few more decades until it was dissolved in 2019. So if you come across the False Memory Syndrome Foundation's research regarding SRAs, they debunk nothing, but they lend more evidence to something sinister going on. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, so, so here you had, you had a girl that went to a therapist and this situation to me seemed it seemed like he did find something out because her mom and dad were brother and sister 
they grew up in the same household. Now they were stepbrother and sister, but they grew up in the same household and she just grew up, you know, under this, this abuse. But the dad started the false memory syndrome foundation to protect himself. And the guy, Ralph Underwager or Underwager, however you want to pronounce it, he is a legit pedophile. Like you could go, you could research his name. And I didn't for, for the sake of that little clip. I mean, it just breaks my heart, but he goes on and on about how pedophilia is okay. And it just breaks my heart, man. And Jeez. so we need to understand that when we're talking about satanic panic and we're talking about recovered memories, that there was a foundation that started to debunk all of that called the false memory syndrome foundation that was that was started by an abuser and a pedophile and it just muddies the water even even more for those that really did go through something like this and want to be heard and need to be heard and need help now we do we have a couple of resources where if you've been legit a legit SRA. We have a few different people that can help you or a few different organizations that can, that can help you. But this is what uh, Satan does, man. He, and it's, it's just like in that Mark Driscoll situation, man, it's like discord division, confusion. What's the real story? What's not the real story? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it, it is. Uh, it's wild. Like I mentioned before, I mean, I think it's and you you have evidence that they literally started this foundation so that they could, quote unquote, debunk all of that. But only to protect themselves, they weren't actually debunking anything. They were a pedophile and an abuser who wanted to protect and insulate themselves. And that seems like it's a common thing. You know, like. It is. What is it? Where nowadays, like I know, like in politics, it seems like the, you know, the left side of politics, it seems like a tactic that they use a lot where whatever they're doing, they'll accuse the other side of doing. And it's kind of it's I guess it's, is that considered gaslighting? Um, but they'll accuse the other side of doing that when they're the ones actually doing it, even, you know, it's even setting up foundations and organizations and i'm thinking about the that guy sandusky uh was it jerry sandusky um that pedophile with the i think it was was it penn state let me just pull up his name real quick well well he's looking for that yeah it's when you when you look at this initial story of how the how the false memory syndrome foundation started there was a lot of evidence that jennifer jennifer pazder was really really um abused by both her parents and um, there was her both her aunts and uncles and grandparents all knew about it and they encouraged her to kind of bring that out into the light and then they go and start this this foundation and oh my gosh it's just it is such a, a, a terrible thing when the victim is now being accused of of you know I mean, it's gaslighting at, at its worst. Yeah. So, yeah, I was right. Jerry Sandusky, he was a coach with Penn State. He started a charity called The Second Mile. They worked, they had youth programs, and he was a pedophile. So it's just, it's yeah. wild, man. Yeah. Well, well, it's even like if, the, <laughs> I remember when South Park dealt with the issue, you had, a, you had Big Gay Al that wanted to be a scout, a Boy Scout trooper leader and they wouldn't let him do it because he was gay but then like the actual um the actual boy scout leader was like all right boys everybody take down your pants we're gonna screw you now and they were they were getting screwed um and you know we we, we have to realize the boy scouts is no longer an organization anymore because they were there it was just systemic abuse of of pedophiles abusing the boys within the Boy Scouts. It's crazy. No Glad kidding. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I'm I'm serious. I did not know that they they weren't around anymore. Yeah, they're dissolved, man. 
Uh, I, the Girl Scouts are still around. Thank God. Got to get my caramel delights or Samoas, <laughs> wherever you come from. That's what it's all about, man. The peanut butter cookies. Come on. Girl Scouts are still around. But yes, the Boy Scouts are no longer an organization. And it was a very, it was worse than, or I would say not worse, but it was almost like when they started to peel back the layers of, you know, the Catholic Church. Um, it's very, very sad you know, how parents put their children um, in the hands of, you know, these leaders and they basically, you know, yeah, I, I can't say enough. It, it breaks my oh, heart, but, man. but, you know, but, you know, and then this, and then this is, this is what brings it back to it all for us guys, right? Like a lot of us guys, if you're a tough guy, whatever, dude, be a tough guy. If you've got kids out there, you're sending your kid to school, you're putting your kid in this organization, and your kid says something like, hey, man, this guy touched me the wrong way. It's there's there's no there's no system that you should have to go through to get in front of the, the guy's face that your kid's accusing. You get in front of his face, you get the truth, and you and you talk to these people. If that's what it takes, you call the police. If that's what it takes, be a man and, and stop thinking. Don't think, well, I'm a Christian and I just can't, I have to do everything by the Bible. You are doing everything by the Bible by protecting your kid. If somebody looks at my daughter the wrong way, I'm going to get in their face. Right. And I'm just saying it's not it, it's we need men that have discernment and have courage to stand up for what really is right. What Mark Driscoll did, I don't give a crap about that. You're in, he was in a safe place. Nothing was gonna happen to him. He knew controversy was gonna come. That's not courage. That's, that's somebody for whatever reason, I know Chris says it's not the book sales, but for whatever reason, Jezebel wanted attention and got attention off of that. You know who's not who's not getting the attention is the kid that's being abused right now. Somebody within his sphere of influence is a Christian and needs to be able to discern what is going on and stand up. Yeah. Go Tom Dunn. What are some of you mentioned organizations Mike that uh that if someone has has been experiencing um like any sort of ritual abuse that the Lord is beginning to open their their eyes and their mind to. I know ArchangelMinistries91.com right. with the work that Jason and Janice are doing, uh, Tom Dunn at Through the Black, um, Discovering Mercy, Fern and Audrey, they work yeah. with satanic ritual abuse survivors. Those are the three that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Can you think yeah, of any those, others? Um, well, those are the th those are the three that we have vetted and we know and we can trust. So yeah, the um, we'll make sure we got the links of those three down in there for Archangel Ministries ninety one, uh, T Tom Dunn with Through the Black, and then uh, Fern and Audrey with um, what how, what's their what's theirs called? Discovering Mercy. Right. And they were they were lightly connected with Heiser or were they were speaking with Heiser about some of the stuff? Yeah. Too? Yeah. Dr. Heiser, I think, really kind of helped to 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 lead and guide them as far as understanding how the work they were doing connected with, you know, spiritual warfare from a, a, a truly a biblical sense and kind of under the divine council worldview, understanding how uh, the spirit realm kind of really really is and really operates those sort of things. Yeah, man, it's a uh, dude. It's, it's a terrible thing that, that happens when a child gets abused. And that's where I just say it's man, like just, just, if you're a guy, you're driving down the street, you're listening to this before you go to bed at night. Is there somebody out there that may need your help? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying to go knocking down doors and stuff, but I'm just, all I'm saying is that, what I am saying is I want us to all pray the prayer. And this is an easy prayer is Father God, if there is somebody within my sphere of influence and I have the ability and the means to help them get out of an abusive situation is I'm, I'm raising my hand saying I'm, I'm ready, I'm available, I want to help. 
Amen. Yeah. And if you're listening to this and Mike, this comes out before the here I am conference um, and you want to get some, some training and equipping on how you can help someone who's being abused, whether it's a child or someone who is being, is a part of human trafficking or, you know, forced prostitution or, or something like that. And you want to learn how you can actively help uh, check out archangel ministries, 91.com for their here I am conference. It is in Houston. I do believe that if you're not able to make it physically, they are going to provide all of the uh, seminars and courses and everything um, on their website after, possibly live during or both. Um, so, But if you want to support what they're doing, then you could go on, purchase a ticket. If you can make it, you, you'll get all those resources there. Um, but they're, Tom Dunn's going to be there teaching, Vicki Joy, and, and others who are a part of um, – helping to rescue people out of human trafficking. And there's a lot of different situations where people can be involved in that. It's, it's, it's children, it's adults, it's, you know, forced and chained up. It's walking the streets. It looks different, different situations and scenarios. So yeah, if you guys heard last week's episode of the girl that listened to the camp Herman episode with Janice pillow and contacted us contacted Archangel Ministries 91.com and now she she got set free and she's in um Chris is she she's still being counseled and stuff right yeah she's 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 basically been placed with a, a family um and yeah she's going through process of counseling and healing right. I yeah. love it I love it so yeah if you're being if you're being abused there's people around you there should be Christians around you somebody God will send you somebody. Pray like she did. Pray and God will send you somebody. That's all I got, man. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that was a good way to, to land we, this plane, I think. Um, you know, hey, guys, thank you for sticking around. I know we were talking about some, you know, tough subjects, you know, but at the end of the day, stand up for Jesus. Stand up for what you believe in. And really, is this was the whole Mark Driscoll thing just some petty nonsense to get a lot of YouTubers a lot of views? I don't know. I just don't like the fact that so many people are talking about it or that we're even talking about it. But I've got issues with those type of places. And when it comes to SRA, satanic ritual abuse, it when it comes to any kind of abuse... I know it's hard to listen to, but pray that prayer. You know, man, woman, or child, if you are a warrior, pray that prayer. Tell God that you are available. Chris, camp on. Camp on, Mike. Until next time. Peace. Hey. They came down to top vanity, brought the proliferation of humanity. A fallen sons of the most high God took advantage of the planet he made, forming a holy alliance of evil and look at the daughters of Adam in vain. That the flood rain came to restore his creational order to how he arranged. But the disembodied spirits of the giants still want a war, still want to kill in the court. And see the blood of the innocent spill on the floor. That's the demoniac and the kind of issue with combined. The healer restores his image bearers in his second chance when he coming back because he's bringing a sword. This ain't a planned sermon, it's a welcome to Camp Herman. Yeah. Welcome to Camp Herman. This ain't a planned sermon, it's a welcome to Camp Herman. Yeah. Welcome to Camp Herman. <laughs>